Hello, everybody. Welcome to a yet another chat. So thanks for coming on and hanging out with me. So listen, I want to talk to you about something um, that is a little bit controversial. At least my take on it is. And this is about dropping a scene and letting go. Okay. So it sounds like dropping a deuce, but that's not what you're doing. But it's the same idea. You are releasing. You you are letting go. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to think of a scene that maybe is a little bit rough for you or it's a little bit tough for you, right? Meaning, okay, I've been trying to manifest this thing and it's not showing up and I don't know how to let it go and I don't know what that exactly means. And so I want you to kind of keep that in the back of your head as we're exploring this, okay? So do humans ever have closure? Okay, so I'm now asking the question psychologically. This is not just about Neville. This is about can... can a human really ever truly have closure because really letting go that's part of what is going on you have mental and emotional closure with okay i've impressed the subconscious it's coming i can let it go okay so i actually disagree with pretty much every psychologist out there um now the reason being is because we're always we're always shifting we're always moving. We're always active, meaning the mind is, but we're also biologically moving around, walking, moving, doing things, right? And so can we ever shut the door fully on a memory? Can we ever shut the door fully on a feeling that has generated a memory? So partly yes and no, but psychologically, the answer will always be no. Because in the psychological world, in the therapeutic world, the idea is that you don't really ever find full closure, is that you ultimately are healed up enough to be able to deal with anything that comes your way. Now, that actually doesn't sound very far off from the idea of understanding what it means to let go or drop the scene, okay? Because I think people really have this militant, almost closed-mindedness of understanding what it means to drop or let go of a scene, okay? So, in short, if you were, at, um, if you were really, really waiting for me to answer very clear about whether I believe closure is possible, really psychologically, no, not at all, whatsoever. Like, you will always take a part of that with you, okay? Now, why? Because who you are now is shaped by your childhood, Right. And so in developmental psychology, that's ref that's referred to as a schema. That's your map. OK. Now, can you use Neville to produce closure? Ah, that's a much more important question. And the answer is yes, you can. So remember, psychologically, as in the three dimensional understanding of the human mind, closure is not possible ever. OK, but. Neville argues against that. And I think that's why he is extremely powerful and important for people's psychological and therapeutic journeys, right? And so if you're listening and you are visiting a therapist, go ahead, continue. There's nothing wrong with that. But note that you can actually move forward um, no matter what your therapist is saying about whether you can or not, okay? So what that means though is to fully understand what is really happening when you're letting go or dropping a scene is to really understand that you are letting go a part of the old self. That's what you're letting go of, okay? So when you drop a scene, you're not only taking on the new person, you're letting go of the old person. So you're letting go of the reactions and the value system and the beliefs and the perceptions of the older person, right? You're letting go. The Bible says, let the dead bury the dead. So that's dead. That's gone, right? And so would you go back every single day to a cemetery to visit somebody? Probably not. And somebody that you didn't love, would you go do that? Most likely, definitely not, right? And this is what's ultimately happening. When you're learning to let go, you're learning to love the part of you that you want to let go of less and less and less because you're no longer aligning with that. You're no longer saying, I am that person. So you have to think of this like an actual death, because if you do constantly look as, am, am I that person? Am I not that person? Am I this person? Am I not that person? Right. And you get neurotic and, ang and, and ang like anxious and it could lead to depression and powerlessness. And, you know, neuroscience says that if you keep going down that loop, then you end up going into victim mentality. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to use this metaphor because it, it's a powerful metaphor that letting go is dying to the old self. 
So when Jesus says this in scripture, take it literally, not just metaphorically, not spiritually. Like, like you could, because why? Because imagine every single time how you would look in this world if you went and visited this dead person that you no longer are connected with or connected to or identifying with. How crazy would you look to other people? Like, not only that, to yourself, like I am literally following my path of anxiety to go check to see if the old person is dead, right? It would, it, it would just look bananas. So you don't want to do that. So, and here's where the controversy comes in. Because you're going to hear most coaches, especially Neville coaches, try to say that dropping the scene or letting go is also the same as letting go of the feelings of the wish fulfilled. Not at all. Whatsoever. Not even 1%. Why? Think about this. If your wish fulfilled is the feeling of excitement, why would you want to get rid of that anyways? Who doesn't want to go about their day feeling excited? This is not about effective fatigue, by the way. Okay, this is not about saying, I need to stay in excitement. But when you think of your desire that's already yours, you're going to feel excitement. It doesn't mean that every single time that you think of it, that now you have to somehow squash that emotion. This is not about stoicism. By the way, I'm, I'm going to do another video on stoicism. Highly misunderstood. Okay, highly. As somebody who was in the academic world teaching all of this stuff, very, very misunderstood and, and, and almost to the point of abuse when people are trying, and, and, and I mean self-abuse, like I can't feel this. That's not what the stoics are saying at all. Let's go back. So what I want to do is I want to encourage you as you are going through your day to, to recognize and realize that the letting go is the letting go of the old man, not letting go of the, uh, the feelings of the wish fulfilled, okay? But hear me, this is not about affective or emotional fatigue. You're not supposed to stay in that. This is not law of attraction, okay? This is the law of belief, and it's about belief. So the feelings are leading you to the belief, to the self-conviction that you are that person now, that you've accepted it. It's you. It's done, right? Now, another argument to this, and this actually does make sense, and I'm going to bring this in as well, is that would you always be generating those feelings if you already had what you wanted? Most likely not. But there's nothing wrong at all if you want to feel that way, right? We need to stop creating so much, so many laws around this is the correct way. Because at the end of the day, if you do something and that gets you into the state of the wish fulfilled, I personally don't care. If it's you using crystals and palm readers and music and whatever it is, setting up an ambiance in your room, do that. There's nothing wrong with that. The whole point is though, is where it does become wrong, is when you think that is what's manifesting. That's not manifesting ever, and it never will. You are manifesting. You are the operant power. Not how many times you go to church, not how many times you read the Bible, not how many times you praise Allah, not how many times you rub the magic lamp. It doesn't matter. None. It's always you. So again, back to this, okay? It's okay to stay in the feelings of the wish fulfilled, okay? But also what you're letting go of is the old person, okay? So let go of them, bury them. If you have to have a ritual, do it. In this world, I mean. It doesn't matter. This is why sometimes you'll even see people who will get together and they'll have these really tearful, momentous like experiences of like, okay, write down what you're trying to let go of and then they'll burn it, right? If that works for you, do that. But when you do that, walk away. Let the dead bury the dead. If you wanna do it symbolically, do the same thing. Write it on a piece of paper, throw it away. If you don't want to do that symbolically, do it mentally. Imagine you're doing the same thing. Have it written down. Imagine you've written it down on a piece of paper, okay? Whatever it is, fear, anxiety, uh, uncaring parents. It doesn't matter what it is. And then imagine you feeling it, you're crumpling it up. And as you do that, let it go. Like full on, just full. And whatever happens, let it happen. You cry, cry. You get angry, get angry. It doesn't matter, okay? because you're letting it go. So you're gonna manifest more opportunities to let things that don't serve you go, right? So hopefully this was helpful. Again, if you're looking for science-backed, psychologically-based coaching in the work of Neville, get in touch. I would love to support you on your manifestation journeys. 
And again, remember, manifestation journeys, I, I really don't like to even talk, like call it that. We, we, we separate it. This isn't separate. It's your life journey, right? Manifesting is what you do and who you are, okay? It's not something that you go and do as some part like that's separate from you. It's something that you do every day, okay? And you're doing it effortlessly. So why don't you do it purposely? All right, much love to you guys all. Be safe.